Hello, I'm the Franchise King, Joel Labava. In the last video, I shared a, uh, a restaurant story. Uh, you know, I was in the restaurant business for many, many years, uh, starting as a dishwasher uh, for a Chinese restaurant and working uh, my way up to a maitre d' in Las Vegas. Um, <clears throat> one, of the, the, one of the first restaurant jobs I had uh, was at a very, very upscale restaurant in Cleveland. I'm not going to mention the name. It's not in business anymore. But it was one of the places to be, whether you were a celebrity performing in town or, um, let's say, a character in Cleveland uh, or a powerful business person, uh, some sports figures, etc. A lot of people came to this restaurant. And I was what, um, I don't know if they're still called busboys, but I was a busboy. So I assisted the waiters, the waitresses in this case, it was all females, uh, with serving um, some very high profile guests. Um, I got pretty good at it and I was well liked. I even had um, um, a VP of a company ask for me to be his busboy uh, whenever he dined at the restaurant. It was kind of cool. He gave me a little, a little side tip. Um, every time he was there. Anyway, I learned really how to take care of people. That, that, that's, uh, the takeaway from working in, uh, more than one, uh, upscale restaurant. But here's the story. So, um, about every two weeks, um, uh, a major, uh, local union figure would come into the restaurant. Um, he was big time and, um, he, uh, had a couple people with him, including a bodyguard who uh, was six foot six, six foot seven, around 260 pounds, a big guy. Um, and I remember the first time that I was the busboy for their table, um, you know, I was pretty nervous. Um, I, I didn't make a lot of eye contact, but, you know, I poured the water, went around and poured the water and, and, and did a heck of a job. Um, and I would start to notice that they would come in more often and somehow I would end up with the table because it was the section that I worked in most often and the waitresses knew that I worked with the two of them, uh, knew how to take care of this uh, gentleman and his entourage. Um, now let me preface this by saying that I knew when this union guy was going to come in, uh, because his bodyguard, uh, would come in first, talk to the hostess, the mater or the mater D at the front and casually scope out who else was in the restaurant. Once he felt the coast was clear, and, and I don't know who this union guy's enemies were, but he obviously had some because this was a, a, an armed bodyguard and a big guy. Um, once the bodyguard scoped the restaurant out, um, talked to the hostess or the maitre d', found out who was there, who wasn't, he would go back downstairs to the valley parking area and uh, bring bring the union guy up with usually a couple guys. And these were all big guys, all over six be tall. Um, um, pretty, uh, you know, it was a pretty um, intense table to, to take care of as a waitress, uh, it must have been. But as a busboy, it was. I mean, I was, I don't know, 18 years old, 17 years old. Uh, this little skinny kid, you know, taking care of these big guys who didn't really talk much, didn't laugh much, um, just ordered their food and, and, and conversed. Well, one time they came in, um, they ate their dinner. Um, you know, I gave the Cursory, hello, hello, because, uh, you know, they'd seen me around a little bit. They knew, you know, that I worked there. Um, and it was time for coffee and dessert. Well, guess who pours the coffee at a, at a fancy restaurant? Me, the busboy. Um, so I'm pouring coffee and, uh, I get to the bodyguard and I pour his coffee and all of a sudden he jumps like that and a little coffee spilled on his lap. He looks at me. I'm like, I mean, I was like, I'm sure I turned red. Um, and I said, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm fine. And I finished pouring the coffee to the other person, and I went to the back of the restaurant uh, with the tail between my legs. I was, like, freaking out. I mean, you know, spilling. I mean, it was just a couple drops, but spilling hot coffee on this big bodyguard who carried a gun and who was just really imposing, uh, was uh, quite the experience. And, of course, the next time that I took her to their table when I poured the coffee, I was definitely uh, a little shaky. 
Turns out that um, uh, Jerry and I became like almost friends. Uh, he would come by um, after um, he drove um, his boss and dropped them off and stuff. Sometimes he would come back because where I work was a real hopping place. The bar um, was a hopping place. And he would come in and sometimes he would stay a little too late and wouldn't feel comfortable driving. So he'd be like, come here. Okay. What would you like? You just drive me home. No problem. So I used to drive Jerry home, which was like really close. And we got to know each other. And um, um, I also parked cars at this place. It was one of my jobs. Um, it was like a, it was a, a fancy mall. And I parked cars and I worked at a couple of restaurants, kind of all at the same time in different shifts. Man, I was always working. I wanted to make money. Um, so when I was parking cars and he would come in, he'd be driving um, his boss in and he'd kind of wink at me, he'd slip me a tip to park his car, and tell me to park it up close. And uh, he would shake my hand and we became friends. So it was kind of cool. Anyway, that's the story of the time that I spilled coffee on the six foot seven bodyguard of a union guy in Cleveland, Ohio back in the late 70s. Uh, I will never forget it, um, and he uh, he probably will. Thanks for watching. I'm the Franchise King, Joel Abava. If you want to know anything about franchising small business, pop by my website, thefranchiseking.com, because I can help you a lot. Thanks for watching this video.